everybody. Welcome to another episode. I'm Mike Monticello. I'm Ryan Pulikowski. And I'm Alex Nizek. So today the vehicle we're going to talk about is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk 4xE. Now just for a bit of background, uh, the Grand Cherokee is a two-row midsize SUV. Uh, a little bit more on the burly side for some off-road ability than your average you know, two-row midsize SUV. But all, and also kind of more on the luxurious side in terms of the cabin. And we, the Grand Cherokee was redesigned for 2022. We have already tested it, and we tested ours with the naturally aspirated V6, uh, 3.6 liter V6 that makes 293 horsepower with an eight-speed automatic transit transmission. But what we're going to talk about today is this Trailhawk 4 by E, 4 by E. It says 4XE, but they Jeep says you're supposed to say it 4 by E. So these are our first impressions of a version that we rented from Jeep. So Alex, tell us what makes the Trailhawk version special and what 4 by E means, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay. So starting with Trailhawk, Trailhawk basically, as the name kind of implies anyway, that this is the most off-road capable version of the Grand Cherokee that you can get. Um, there are a couple different versions that you can get with the P or the 4 by E powertrain, but um, yeah, so the, the Trailhawk itself, the main things that this gets over a regular Grand Cherokee um, are the biggest one is the disconnecting front sway bar. Um, that's the only trim you can get that on. And basically what that means is at the touch of a button, you can disconnect that front bar that's there for roll stability and roll control. Disconnects that. And that way, when you're climbing up giant boulders and things like that, you get more suspension articulation out of the, the front axle, which is super cool. It's never been on the Grand Cherokee before. Yeah, some other things that you can get on or that come with the, the Trailhawk are basically a, whatever Jeep calls it, but it's an off-road cruise control. So you can set the cruise control at like half mile an hour increments starting at literally half mile an hour, and it will try to control the vehicle going down a hill, but it also works going up a hill, um, which is kind of neat. And you oh, so, it's, the, so it's not just hill descent control. It's It's kind of, in a sense, more advanced than that. Yeah, exactly. So the regular Grand Cherokees come with a hill descent control, typically anyway. And then this one gets it basically in both directions, which is pretty neat. And it works yeah. pretty well. Um, you get some tow hooks that are exposed at the front. Um, limited slip rear differential, which you can get on other um, Grand Cherokees. But this one comes with it by default. Um, air suspension. So this thing can raise up pretty good. Um, and then it's the only one I think that comes with this specific set of all-terrain tires. So it's got some fairly aggressive all-terrain tires on it. Um, 31 inches in diameter. And then it does get some um, different bumpers that change the approach and departure angles, which is good for off-roading because it helps you avoid hitting rocks and stuff. So that's Trailhawk. Um, 4 by E is a little more interesting. This, at least in 2022, this means a Jeep plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Um, and the reason I'm specifying that is because recently uh, they also talked about electric vehicles that are coming out for the Jeep brand. And so they might be using this four by E name um, elsewhere in other full electric vehicles in the future. But for now, uh, it means a plug in hybrid. Um, and it uses the same uh, powertrain as the Wrangler uh, four by E that we tested. So it's a two liter turbo four cylinder connected to an eight speed um, automatic. But then it's got two motors and um, bear with me. I'm using some geeky terms here. But in the P zero position, which means that the motor is on the front. Basically, it's an accessory. So it's a uh, starter motor, like a mild hybrid, essentially, that adds some power. Um, but then you also have another electric motor in what's called the P2 position. So that's in between the engine and the transmission. You have another electric motor in there. Um, and basically, all of this combined makes 375 horsepower. So it's pretty pretty stout, actually, compared um, to some of the other versions. Uh, and it uses a battery to power um, you know, the, the hybrid system and allows you to drive a little bit on electric-only range, which we will definitely talk about that kind of low 25 miles of, of EV range that it lets you do. But yeah, that that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So um, we'll talk about whether the four by E is worth it or not. But yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for that, Ryan. Let's talk about let's talk about what it's like to just drive as a regular vehicle first. And then we can get into kind of in a sense, the more fun stuff, because I mean, the reality is a Grand Cherokee is pretty capable off road anyway. So but I so we definitely want to talk about how much more capable the Trailhawk is. But let's talk about it the way most people are honestly going to use it, which is on the road. How does this hybrid powertrain in, in particular work with the big, heavy Grand Cherokee? 
So first of all, I, I think I'm, I'm a big fan of the regular Grand Cherokee. Nice. Um, I, I've, I've liked the last few editions of it. And then there's this one, right? Uh, it's it's heavier. Uh, I, you can definitely feel the weight, right? But I thought it did a quite, it was quite nice to drive. Um, the, the, the hybrid power supplements the regular uh, engine quite nicely, and it feels very eager. Uh, it's got a lot of power. Like it really wants to go, and it um, it's it's very smooth. It's, it's in, instantaneous. That being said, I mean you know r- handling wise, you know this has some um, you know mild off t- uh, all terrain tires on it, uh, meaning they're, they're they're all terrain tires. But they look a little more aggressive, and they're meant for uh, some off road use. They're not true all terrain tires, which would be like you know more aggressive and whatever but still these tires um i think they do hinder the handling a little they're typically all terrain tires um you know they have a little more of an aggressive tread pattern so they're a little looser uh naturally um in their in, uh, handling dynamics you know because because that tread also you know to, to help off road it has to kind of be that way there's a bigger more void um and whatnot sorry i had to get my tires uh, spiel uh, in yeah actually <laughs> it, it sort sometimes ryan it felt to me like almost like the car's turning on its Axis, you know, immediately sure. like yeah, is they, it they are the tread blocks softer? Yeah, they squirm. It feels like it squirms mm. when well, you first sure. turn in, and nothing terrible, but just a little squirming sensation. Is that from the soft tread blocks, or what is that? Yeah, and it's not necessarily that they're soft. I mean, they they, they could be, and um, that can be the case. But it's it's often uh, an all terrain tire has a deeper non skid, meaning they're just deeper tread. So you have taller blocks, and the okay. blocks are spread out, so they're not supporting each other. There, there's gaps between them. So when you turn, they're rolling a little bit. And now that translates through the rest of the tire, through the suspension, all the way to the steering wheel. So now you have this little bit of a delay, right? Um, where if you think of like a high performance summer tire, the complete other end of the spectrum, that they're very blocky and it's all, you know, it's all, it's just more surface area touching each other. So they're very rigid, right? Uh, so all terrain tires just have that kind of a, a characteristic, which is fine. And it, it's not bad at all, but uh, the weight, added weight, and then that, um, makes this thing I, you're not going to drive it at uh, uh aggressively and get a, a satisfying result i don't think it, it'll roll a little bit it kind of starts to understeer when it gets to, you know you start to really push it to that point but but are you driving a car like this like that um all the time no you and you shouldn't be it's not that type of a vehicle right uh you get more off-roady stuff like this that's how it's going to feel and that's kind of uh why you're buying it if you if you want to do that off-road stuff but i i, I thought uh all in all you know the plug-in hybrid part you can you can run this thing on some battery you know it's, it's odd but when you're driving in the woods and you're crawling slowly i mean i knew monty we've talked about this yeah it's kind of neat to yeah. not hear anything except for the tires kind of crunching mm-hmm. over leaves and crawling up stuff um and electric power as we know is just sheer torque instantly uh all the way up to whatever i don't know you know as a plug-in hybrid um i, I think that's the Really, the only time you're going to use that kind of a that you know because it's a short range from what I what from what I gather. Yeah, it's like 20, 25 miles. Right. So and maybe if, maybe if you have a short commute to work, that's cool. But um, what's neat about these four by E's is you can preserve that battery until you get to a trail or um or or whatever you want to save it for. You can actually preserve it. it doesn't use it right off the top. Um, so you can just drive around in hybrid mode and then you can disperse that uh, straight electric power at a certain point, which I think is neat because it makes that kind of sets us apart from other uh, plug in hybrids, I think. So. Yeah, they they give you a lot of control over yep. how you want to use the hybrid power, the plug in hybrid powertrain, which to your point, Ryan, yeah, that's a bit different than some other plug ins where sure, they don't, yeah. you kind of just have to roll with it, whatever it wants to do. Um, yeah, you can save the power, like you mentioned, or you can even just force it to charge the battery, which is kind of cool. Takes power away from the engine, of course, but um, you can do that if you want. It does feel a little bit wasted to me. Like, I love being able to kind of get that into the detail and, and manage it in that way. But then the fact that you're only managing 20 miles, 25 miles of range would be nice if it was something like 40 or 50 um, that you got to play with. But um, it's cool that they let you do it. Yeah, yeah that, so that on the left side of the driver's dash are some buttons you can press. And one of those is exactly what you guys are talking about. So if you you, you press this button called e-save, and that will save, you know, all of your electric power for off-roading, uh, which we can get into in a little bit as well. But but that's just got, like you said, it's kind of cool that you can you've got that flexibility to right. kind of control when mm-hmm. when you use that electric power and when you don't. Uh, Alex, any other um, uh, in inputs from you on the powertrain and and what you did and didn't like about it 
Yeah. So you, um, you, I assume you got to run it in full EV. Yeah. And I actually made it all the way home. I'm about 20 miles from the track. Um, I was able to, starting with a 100% full charge, I was able to roll into my driveway with like two miles left of, of EV, you know, without, and it wasn't like I was hypermiling it, if that's possible in this vehicle, you know, just driving it normally, I was able to get home. But otherwise, yeah, you know, I, I like the regular Grand Cherokee, like Ryan was talking about. I think this new one, the, the new chassis is quite good. You know, it, yes, it's a big, pretty heavy SUV, but you can tell that it has a nice rear wheel drive character to it. Good suspension dynamics, especially you get it out on the track. And yeah, it's not going to be a, a sports car or anything, but you can just feel that it's got a nice setup and it rotates nicely. And I thought that the most of that held true for the um, Trailhawk, even with the different tires and, you know, maybe different suspension setup and all that. Um, I thought it still drove and, and rode pretty nicely. It kind of has a little bit of a you know, multiple personality type uh, character to it, I guess. It goes up the Rock Hill pretty good. Um, You know, no problems there. Uh, But then, like like I said, pretty good on the track as far as just having neutral dynamics. Um, But then if you do have some of that uh, EV range, you can quiet the thing down and just cruise, uh, you know, comfortably, quietly. So kind of covers a couple bases. You said that you drove it home and you had just a few miles left of of battery power. So did you have it in electric mode when you did that? Is that what you were trying to do? Yeah, See if you I can make it, it home to electric okay. mode. And did it ever did the gas engine ever come on? Because it, for the most part, it won't come on. But it, if you floor it in electric mode, it's still going to come on. Correct. Yeah, correct. Because those I'm going to flip my paper paper over here. Those electric motors only make like mm, 131 horsepower for the main motor and 40 for the other one, which is not right. a combined number. But um, so, yes, when you totally mat the throttle it will kick the uh, engine on and it'll give you that extra power which does take a minute that if you do that it takes a minute for everything to wake up and downshift and engage but yes it, it will do that so were you actually able to drive it without the gas engine ever coming on on your trip mm-hmm. home yeah oh you were okay. yeah it makes enough power where yeah granted i never had to do like pass anybody or do any evasive maneuvers or anything it was a pretty uh uneventful ride but so yeah. what, when i had it in um i guess hybrid mode I, I it really first of all I think it's a really intriguing powertrain, uh, just as we found with the with the Wrangler four by e. And one of the things I I thought was first of all it really does have plenty of power, but in hybrid mode it sort of does almost seems like between the turbo and and the electric power and when it comes on it almost seemed like it needed to sort of spool up a little bit. Like when I first floored it, it was going pretty good, but then it almost seemed like it like there was more of a rush than I was expecting. Like it pushed harder even than I was expecting, which was kind of kind of fun like almost like the evs like the electric power is like oh okay oh yeah he really wants this and the turbo is like oh a little bit of turbo lag oh okay we're going anyway <laughs> I, I kind of enjoyed it but and i thought it had plenty of power for, oh, for it's got um, tons of power yeah. yeah so let's talk about so we've kind of talked about the four by e and well there's other things we need to talk about with how rational it really is yeah, but let's save right. that for for the end let's talk about <laughs> The off-road stuff because Ryan, yeah. you touched on it, and and I I I uh, did use the east. I was lucky. I think it had something like twenty-two miles of electric range. It was showing when I got in it, and I put it in its e-save mode because I was I knew I was going to go do some mild off-road stuff, not nothing like our Rock Hill or anything like that, but just some mild off-roading on some trails near me, and I saved all the power for that. And then again, as with the Wrangler for me, it was just so cool to you know I put the windows down. And you're in electric, full electric power, and it's so quiet. I swear, I was in an area that, um, mm-hmm. some off-roading area where I'm not sure if people were supposed to be camping or not. But anyway, there were some people camping, like just through the trees. And I kind of went near them and turned around and left. And I swear they never even heard me, <laughs> never even knew <laughs> that I was there. Um, yeah. and, and then just the ability of this trail hawk and, and you can talk more about it alex because you did the rock hill and i didn't but you know the ability to raise up the the ride height is just so cool and it actually has quite a lot of you know it gets up really there. far off the ground yeah. oh yeah and then like i said it's and it's got lots of traction from those you know pretty burly altering tires the only thing i noticed was when i got into sort of some pretty steep uh uphill sections and i was trying to be in full ev like it just kind of stopped because it, I think it was running out of power or traction. So then I, I can't remember, I switched it to hybrid and then it, it just worked much better because there wasn't this delay where like, oh, I've got to turn the gas engine on 
to get up that. Did you, did that happen at all right. in the, on the Rock Hill or were you able to, do you know, or did you not try driving it in full EV up Rock Hill? Yeah, I left it in EV or I mean, hybrid mode, excuse me, um, for that exact reason, because I had previously experienced the delay that it might take to get and that hill is pretty steep. So I just kind of left it in hybrid, um, which it did pretty well. But um, so yeah. the point is, it, it actually can't do everything off road in EV. Is that because there are certain situations where it needs more power than the electric motors can give? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I mean, it does have low range gearing, um, but yeah, the power and torque of those motors is only part of the equation. So depending on how steep or whether you drop one of the tires into a, a pretty big hole or whatever it is, you might you might not have enough. I didn't right. experience that myself, but makes probably sense. mostly for for quite serious situations and and not that I was doing quite serious. But yeah, uh, right. anyway, most yeah. of the time when you're off road, you're going to be able to be an EV and it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, so it was good. But so anything else about Rock Hill you want to add like? Yeah, the it did it did pretty well. So the um I did try that off road um you know cruise control if you will. It worked really well going down as a hill descent. Um it worked about the same as these other the systems not unique to Jeep. There's others that allow you to set the speed and um you basically just steer it up the hill. Um it did a pretty good job managing its own tra- traction. Um and the nice thing about that is when you have that system set say at half a mile an hour or whatever you can intervene. So you can, you say, okay, I got this big dip coming up or whatever. I know I need to give it a little more. You can add some throttle, get over that obstacle, and then just take your foot off the gas and it'll settle back into that speed that you set it at. And you can keep going, which is kind of neat, kind of collaborative in that way. But yeah, as far as going up the hill, I, I, our hill is set up in a way where on the right side, it's um, when you're going, looking at it, the right side's more mild. And then the left side, it gets more aggressive as you go over to that left side. And I was able to do the right side, no problem. Um, what stopped me on the left side was actually what I'm pretty sure is just the size of the tires. Um, this thing has plenty of ground clearance, plenty of articulation, but those 30.5 or 31 inch tires, they just got themselves in between too big of, you know, the rocks it's basing is too big and it just couldn't get itself over. So pretty convinced that if you had bigger tires on this thing, it would totally dominate the hill. But um, otherwise, yeah, it was really cool taking the uh, disconnecting the sway bar, getting that extra articulation. Um, the only thing with that is it's a little tricky to, um, get it to disengage or re-engage car kind of has to be flat. You know, you can't be up mid obstacle and like, oh no, I need more articulation and disconnect it. You have to decide before you start doing anything basically, uh, that you want to disconnect it. But knowing that it did work well. So yeah, I was pretty impressed with it. It was fun. The, the discon, the disconnecting sway bar, I think is pretty awesome in the sense Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, that's a huge off-road feature. Um, you know, we, we, modern cars are built to drive on the road most of the time, right? So you're, we're doing everything. They're, they're doing everything they can to keep this car um, handling flat, meaning there's not a lot of body roll, um, uh, and, and, and giving it a good ride, right? So the, a sway bar is a huge part of keeping a car flat and helping its handling dynamics. And it's ex- the exact opposite of what you want off road. Off road, you want those wheels <laughs> right. to be able to drop out of the fender all the way, or go stuck all the way up in. Um, especially on an independent sus- uh, suspension vehicle, um, it's even harder to get that articulation. So you know, if you can unhook a sway bar, that's huge, um, and that's yeah. that's a neat feature if you're going to do the off roading stuff. I think that's a, a pretty mm-hmm. cool, especially because they haven't done that in the Grand Cherokee. The, the Wrangler uh, Rubicons have that have have almost almost always had that. Um, feature, but the Wrangler is a different animal completely. So um, I thought that was that's a cool thing. This this Grand Cherokee Trailhawk really is impressive. Like what it can do off road. It's just mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah it really unlike is. unlike most other vehicles that you can buy. But we mm-hmm. got to talk a little bit about. I mean, you're the the four by e part of it brings you know like an eight to ten thousand dollar you know uh, price hike over a regular Grand Cherokee, and also. Alex, correct me if I'm wrong. For 2023, you're only going to be able to get the Trailhawk as a four by E, which is seems un, a little bit unfortunate yeah. for those who who correct. want to save some money, right? Don't want to have to pay for the four by E part of it, uh, so th- they're going to have to get the four by E. And also, it almost feels like I mean, we weighed this thing, which we don't typically weigh the vehicles that we rent because we're not testing it, and we probably won't test this thing because it is a, a bit niche, and we already tested a regular Grand Cherokee. But it weighs almost six thousand pounds, which is ridiculously heavy. To me, this is more of a hybrid car. I mean, only twenty miles of straight plug-in is not a 
feasible mm-hmm. daily driving EV type of car. And the, the problem, though, Ryan, with treating it like a hybrid is that it, at least according to the EPA, we didn't, of course, get our own numbers. But when it's in hybrid mode, it's only getting 23 combined, whereas the regular V6 is 22, yeah. at least as far <laughs> right. as the rating goes. Yeah. So one mile per gallon, I don't know if that's worth $9,000. So you, you have to plug this thing in to put it into perspective a little bit real quick. So this thing has a 17 point three kilowatt hour battery the rav4 prime another plug-in hybrid suv similar size has an 18 kilowatt battery so same size basically that thing can go 42 miles of you know on full electric range so almost double uh for the same battery size all that so really this thing is just not as efficient as a as a plug-in hybrid suv can be that's a good point yeah all right. Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure people <laughs> I, I still have like lots it. of. I still like it. Yeah, that's the it's, thing. It's <laughs> cool. it's it's, sweet, it's, it's really fun. it's really cool to drive, and it's yeah. one of those things where it, it doesn't make sense, but things don't always <laughs> have to make sense in life. They right. really don't. But right. it is really neat to drive what, both as a Trailhawk, you know, for the off road abilities, and as a four by e again for those uh, kind of electric off road abilities is really neat. Anyway, let's move on to this week's audience question. Don't forget to send those questions, comments, 30-second video clips at TalkingCars at iCloud.com. And this week, our audience question comes from Braulio. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. My partner is expecting a baby soon to add to the four we already have. Besides the Tesla Model X and Rivian R1S, are there any other three-row EVs with decent range available for under $50,000? I'm waiting on the Volkswagen ID Buzz, but I'm not sure we can wait that long as the baby is due in April 2023. Would also consider a plug-in hybrid if that helps expand our options. Any help would be appreciated. Who wants to go? Who wants to take this one first? I, I sometimes, you know, I like to be bossy, but today I just don't feel like being bossy. Who wants to go first? So there's not a lot there. There's not a lot of, uh, uh, this is a narrow, narrow window. So I don't really know of any big three row SUVs that are straight EV. I don't think there are any actually. Um, And even, even plug-in hybrid, uh, because right away my brain goes to hybrids, um, but even plug-ins, I don't know of any third row plug-ins. There are, there are two that I thought of. uh, How big are they though? What do you got? Well, you got Sorento plug-in hybrid, which. Okay. That's third row. Is pretty small third row, but it exists. It's there. And then Pacifica plug-in hybrid. It's a minivan. It's not an SUV, but it is three rows. So that's a stretch, but it does. <laughs> and I will remind that the Model Y, it, again, super small, but you can actually get a third row seat in the Model Y. I don't think it's going to come under that $50,000 mark unless you maybe find one used. Um, but you can actually get a Model Y with uh, with a third row. My answer is a sh- uh, just a straight hybrid uh, Toyota Highlander. This hi- uh, hybrids today make a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, they're getting really great mileage. They're practical. They're, they're most times they're nicer to drive than their, their regular gasoline, uh, counterparts. Um, the, the drive trains are smooth and Toyota, the Toyota hybrid is, uh, second to none really, in my opinion. I know that's not a plug-in at all, but, uh, that's, well, a, that's, a, that's a great car. Yeah. Highlander hybrid, 35 miles per gallon overall in our testing. I mean, so that's, that's an efficient vehicle. And I think mm-hmm. that's not a bad way to go for now. There's three row. SUV EVs coming, but they're mm-hmm. not other than the ones that you mentioned. There's really they're not here yet, so it's it's yeah. going to take a little bit. So and, yeah, and you're going to be hard pressed to come in under fifty thousand dollars. Exactly. So at yes. least with the Highlander Hybrid, you you kind of at least you know you get the third row. You're efficient. You're coming in under fifty thousand dollars. What you don't have is you just it's not a plug in and it's not a full EV. But I think it's not a bad option for someone who's trying to be really efficient right now. We you know we've been talking about it on a few episodes. It's kind of a bummer that, you know, hybrids have finally gotten really good. And yeah. now they're kind of the industry seems to be going away toward full EVs. And, and now that after they've done all this development on them. But uh, so I'd say, you know, don't be afraid to take advantage of all that R&D that they did on this thing and, and, and get that. Uh, anyway, hope that that helps. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. If you want to learn more about the cars and the topics we talked about, you can click on the links in the show notes. Don't forget to send those questions, comments, 30 second video clips to talking cars at iCloud.com. That's the best way to reach my personal assistant, Dave Abrams. Uh, he, he loves getting all your, all your questions and comments. And, uh, speaking of which this episode was produced by Dave Abrams and edited by Anatoly Shumsky. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next week.